For the Enfield Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Agency meeting for Tuesday, March 15th, 7 p.m., we have a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, fire evacuation, if in case of a fire or emergency, there's a door in the back of the room you could go out and away from the building or go the door to my left and then take another left to that door and away from the building down the stairs. Um, roll call, please. Donna Corbin Sabinski. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Carrie Ann Howe. Here. Robert Hendrickson. Here. Kevin Zorda. Here. Nancy Martin. Here. Sean Dean. Absent. Absent. Ian Collins. Here. Phil Kabar? Kober. 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 Present. Okay. Uh, let me stop my phone here. Um, welcome, Phil, to the um, to our commission, our agency. And I hope you... Uh, <clears throat> With that, I wanted to say that, um, yeah, I'm trying to shut my phone off here. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to shut my phone off. Um, so we won't be seeing anybody because we have full, all the full-time people are here. Um, public participation, is there anybody, anybody in the audience that want to speak on items not on the agenda? I don't think so. Anybody in the audience uh, want to speak on items not on the agenda? One last call. <clears throat> anybody want to speak on items not on the agenda? Seeing none, move forward. Agent comments. This is where I want to say it. Um, <clears throat> since we have Phil, a new, another new member, I want to remind everybody uh, about ex parte communication. I know Carrie Ann does a great job explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we should not be commenting or, um, or talking to people. Like if, if you're in the grocery store somewhere and people come up and ask you questions or say they see something on our agenda, please refer them to the staff and comment that you know we should not be talking about it. Uh, in, unless we're in this room during a meeting. We same, have, same with social media. You can't do anything on Facebook, TikTok, none of that. Snapchat, Instagram, whatever. Right. Nothing. Yeah, we shouldn't be doing it. Um, <clears throat> you might want to add about visiting sites, too. That, right. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, um, we don't normally visit sites unless we go uh, together. We take two people, and we talk about it here at the here during our meetings um, because if enough of us go it can become a quorum and then it becomes a special meeting and then we take notes and attendance and that type of stuff too so we don't usually go visit sites unless we all agree or a couple want to go or whatever <clears throat> um, next was I want to say there was a cause 2022 annual meeting it was an online meeting on March 9th it was a I attended it. It was yep. it was great. I, I thought it. you did. Yep. I saw your name. It was a great presentation. Um, one thing I did see, <clears throat> they talked about their, they want to put in some where you could visit vernal pools. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Wasn't that great? And they're making a map yep. on the websites mm -hmm. so that you would know where to go to yep. go visit the sites, and you're going to have yep. all kinds of information about them. And they suggested that uh, that commissions members can go out and look at not necessarily wetlands, it could be uh, conservation or the agriculture, go out and look at vernal pools and see if there's anything that the town wants to look at, and, you know, call out, shout out for a vernal pool in yeah. town. So if we have something in town that we want to add to the website, then we could send the information along. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just starting, they're getting yeah. going on it, but uh, it was great, I thought that was a good idea. Yes, I did too. Did you have anything else that no. you saw? They talked a lot about the um, shorelines and, <laughs> The, um, Some of that stuff wasn't pertinent to Enfield, but right. uh, I really liked the vernal pools. Yeah, it was still really interesting. Um, next, anybody else to my left have any comments? No? To my right? Anybody have anything? No. no. Um, and welcome, Philip, again to our agency. If you need anything, reach out. And uh, Georgie and them are really helpful as well to get you, you know, paperwork and stuff. Um, correspondence. We received the commissioner's list and then the Inland Wetlands contact information again. Uh, please review them. If there's something that you see is incorrect, let Georgie know so they could make the corrections. Um, we also received <clears throat> some paperwork from DEEP. Did you want to talk about that, Georgie? Um, just two applications for the use of pesticides in state waters. One is Crescent Lake and the other is St. Joseph's Pond. 
you. And that's our for informational. Um, so next would be approval of minutes for March 1st. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes <coughs> of March 1st to 2022. Second. second. That was Rob, Bob for seconding. Uh, do we have any discussion? No. Can we have roll call, please? Only discussion point, Madam Chair. Just I noticed on the adjournment for that minute, it doesn't record the time the meeting was adjourned. So uh -huh, it was okay. required. It was 8.01. I don't know if she normally can add that. Can you amend the, amend the yeah, motion? So, so amended. Okay, second. Second. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? Okay, roll call for the amended. Donna Corbin Savinsky? Yes. Virginia Higley? Yes. Carrie Ann Howe? Yes. Robert Hendrickson? Yes. Kevin Zorda? Yes. Nancy Martin? Yes. Ann Collins? Yes. Phil Colbert? Not seated, correct? You're right, oh, he's I'm not sorry, seated. Sorry, yeah. Right. So seven in favor, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next is town attorney report. We have none. Continued public hearings, we have none. New public hearings, we have none. I will make a motion that we move <laughs> old business to um, item number 13 and um, move enforcement reports to item 11. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. passes. So number 11 now is going to be enforcement reports, 174, 130 Shaker Road. Hi. Hi. Good Hi. evening, everybody. My name is George Schober. I'm an attorney in Summers, and I represent Joe Rashi, who is the owner of uh, 174 and 130 Shaker Road. Uh, I was retained yesterday. We received uh, so, <laughs> Good luck. Uh, and, and I saw the site on my way out here tonight. Uh, both sites, actually. Uh, Joe took me there. I've been in communication with Mr. Rochelle both yesterday and today. We've had a couple of phone conversations, uh, and so I'm. I think that what what we discussed and what I'm hoping we can do is to uh, on 174 Shaker, which is actually I believe the only one where there's an enforcement report. 130 has no notice of violation yet, and I'm not certain whether one will be forthcoming or not. But as for 174, uh, this is my client's residence. Uh, it's a 3.02 acre parcel. And uh, my client actually spent all of his summers uh, there on, well, on the piece next door on 176. Uh, that was his grandmother's house. The, this, this land, uh, this lot was cut out of that property. And this land has been in the uh, Pollock family uh, who were uh, my client's grandparents since the early 1900s, and it's been farmed continuously in one manner or another, uh, or or logged. Uh, and so my client, uh, when he was about eight, started cutting firewood there with his uh, grandfather, uh, he and his brother. Uh, we have a map that I believe is from the 1950s or so that actually shows this parcel completely pretty much cleared except for a very little where there is some wetlands and, and freshwater brook is fairly close to the property it's actually not on the property and it was relocated the state apparently redid the bridge on shaker road just west of the property and the brook was redirected and you can see the brook on this map uh, and if you look at where it is today you'll you'll see it flows differently it, it actually goes farther away from where uh, it actually now moves closer than in the, in, the, in the front corner right next to the road basically what it is they used to have a pipe under the road and it was at an angle as a John when it when they when they put the culvert in they, they straightened it out to go directly across the road so basically the water went from going to the right to straight across and I mean it was in the wetlands and it's not on our property so we never said anything about it. Mm -hmm. But I mean that was back when they when they widened the road and went to four lanes on it. So what we're hoping to do is to come back to you next month with an application uh, for so so my client is cutting, let me back up. My client is, is cutting firewood there, processing, harvesting uh, timber. Uh, and a lot of the timber is coming from 130 Shaker Road, which uh, he purchased in 2020. Uh, 
and so the the timber is being brought to 174 and, and processed where timber has always been processed. So we believe this is an agricultural exemption uh, situation. And so uh, my understanding is, is that this commission would typically receive an application and then make a determination as to whether or not it's exempt under the statute. And so that's what we'd like to do uh, is to have it in uh, I'll, I'll speak with Mr. Uh, Rochelle in the next you know, week or so to, to get our dates down, uh, and we'll try to put together a plan. This isn't this commission's purview, but we were, my client was also issued a notice of violation for running the firewood operation that he has run for the last however many years. Uh, and so we're going to put together a special use permit application. It is an allowed activity in the industrial zone. This is all industrial zone land. And so we're going to put a special use permit application together and bring that to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, for the approval. Uh, and, and then there's one other minor item that we're, we're dealing with uh, on, on the house itself. And, and again, we'll work with the zoning enforcement officer. It's not a wetlands issue. Issue. Uh, so that's where where we stand. That's you know my involvement in the last 24 hours. Uh, I'm happy, and, and my client. Uh, so Joe's here, and we're happy to try to answer any questions that you may have. I'm glad to see that you're here. Uh, we do appreciate that. I do have a question. So basically, everything that you're harvesting from 130, you're transporting to 174 and processing there. So you're not harvesting anything off of 174. No, we're not harvesting off, off of 174. It's so it's that, that was cleared back when strictly uh, processing, mulching. Yeah, uh, we're, we haven't. Well, we were planning on mulching. They said, John. I said basically, we were. We bought uh, Pop Moody's place just down the street. Mm -hmm. I says, John, because it was getting too much for, for, for the three acres I had. So, I mean, but I, you know, in the 50 years that we, we've been at it, I mean, we've never even heard of permits. I says, John, I says, because we've, we've always <laughs> considered it far. I mean, and nobody, nobody brought it to our attention. And all of a sudden, I get a letter in the mail last Tuesday, you know. Uh, it's it's no. one of those situations where ignorance of the law is no excuse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just because you didn't see a speed limit sign doesn't mean that you can go 110 miles an hour. You know, but it is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just something that yeah. my grandfather started. I mean, we used to back when he owned where Hallmark is over on Bacon Road. Yeah, we used to bring the wood from over there back to the to the, to the house. Yeah, it's just doing doing basically the same thing. Well, there were no wetlands regulations back then either. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't believe we had zoning back then. That's why I'm here. He's just throwing the straight in the south. Yeah. So, so I think I think we're good then. Okay. Uh, did you have anything to add, Rick? No, nothing other than well, I wouldn't really, really call it an exemption. It's still a review by this board um, yes. and an yes. approval, and with the depositing. Uh, of materials and machinery, that's obviously going to have to be addressed with some sort of site plan showing where that activity is going to be taking place. Also, uh, although it's not under this uh, agency's purview, it is within the floodplain. Um, so you're going to have to take uh, that into consideration, too. The 100 year floodplain, yeah. That's, that's at 126. That's why we had to build a house where we did. So most of the property is within the floodplain. Yeah. Mm. So that means the activity is in the floodplain too. So just so you understand that, okay. So w the one other thing I'll mention is uh, where the wetlands are, or where some of the wetlands are, uh, along the west side of Shaker Road. So if you're if you're looking at the property, the property is on the south side of Shaker, and if, so if you're looking at it to the right, uh, there's actually a sewer easement, and the town sewer was put through the wetlands uh, many many years ago. And it runs along the side. It's, a tw I believe, a 25-foot wide yeah. sewer easement. It runs along. It's, it's approximately, my, my client thinks it's about 14 feet deep. And it was dug up and then filled with sand. And it runs almost all the way along the uh, side of the property. And then it cuts across the back of my client's property as, as well. So uh, it, the wetlands that are on the property, I would not view them as pristine. I think once you dig it up for the uh, sewer and you fill it with sand, you're you're not. It's not your typical wetlands that you might see. 
I was out there when you when you walk in and look down, you, you see the brook down through the woods, but it, it kind of falls down and it's it's really not a, a really I would classified as really much of a functioning wetlands that well then part of your application you may want to retain a soil scientist and have them give us a formal opinion as to that and you may want to submit an application for revision of the wetlands map because yeah. that's that's basically what you're asking for yeah. and that's that's a completely separate application you can't just kind of piggyback it in and try and slide it through so if you want to change the wetlands map you would have to do a specific application for that with a soil scientist. And, and I'm not sure that we want to do that. We're trying to keep this as simple and as cost efficient as possible for my, my client. Mm -hmm. He's not looking to expand over any more than what he's been doing for the last 50 years. He's not looking to clear any additional land. It's more uh, just, you know, pull the proper permits that, that he needs to. But we kind of like to stay away from revising the wetlands map if possible. Just a quick question on the, um, so we have these Google Earth uh, photos, and I'm not sure if you have them. I, I have them. In so yeah. so it, it's a small picture. Yep. <laughs> there does appear to be some quite large piles. Are, is that mulch or is that soil? Uh, that was, it's actually wood chips in the far back corner. Um, yeah. Are, are we looking at the picture with the truck? Well, there's the, this these, one. Yeah. So this looks like there's some uh, oh, the Google large Earth piles ones. here yeah. and yeah. some over here. Okay, those are all log ones. There's a pile of chips in the far back. If, let's make sure we're on the same yeah. the same photo. Are we on the uh, the 2019 Google Earth photo or the 2021? 2021. I'm looking 2021. at those, that, those logs are gone. Those logs are gone. Well, when you say those logs, uh, he's not hes not going to be able to tell what. Yeah, yeah what so, they are. So right here, there's a. a uh, can, pretty, I pro can I approach yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. So, and it looks like you have your equipment parked in front of a pile of oh, he's, something. Now he's looking at this big one. Okay. Okay. So I see a backhoe, like here. Oh, that's, 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 so, that's, that's not our property. This, this right oh, here. oh, okay. So that's, yep. uh, yeah, that's a different property. Okay. Ah, this okay. right here is lo our Okay, so these are your logs. Yeah. Okay, so there's only yeah. some small you piles You got some there. logs there, and you got some logs there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was, yep, I just was just looking at the totally wrong right. property. Yeah. So perfect. Uh, yeah, and these are the logs. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, if you could oh, wow. like draw that out or something <laughs> with your application. Because the um, the wetland map shows like half the property is. Is that, is that is that the wetlands map that, or the floodplain? That's the floodplain. That's that's 120. No, there's is it the there's wetlands map. That's the wetlands yeah, map. The wetlands right. map. Also, if I may, uh, so with the existence of Freshwater Brook, uh, it comes under the 200 foot purview. Just to as a reminder, and as for the easement, uh, the easement was granted. Just so you, it's on the record, uh, June of 1980 between the previous owner John and Stella Pollock in the town of Infield for that uh, easement that was previously discussed. Mm. So I, I think in your packet uh, was, this was in the packet, right? I have that in, in red, same subject. That is was not. That's the one you took. Did I, I took I that from that you? Where did that come from? Yeah. That's the one I gave you. I know. Yeah, where, yeah. where did you get it from? Uh, it, it wasn't in the. It wasn't mailed to you. No. No. Okay. Okay. So we have a map. It's actually from 1992, and and there is some wetlands flagging along the side, and it is quite different than, than what the town has. But again, we're gonna we're gonna try to avoid dealing yeah. with the map. You, you can't have it both ways. I so. understand. <laughs> I don't want to introduce that I've if it's not in. no. something is, is you're interested in. Is wetlands the same as the 100-year floodplain? No. 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 Because on his map, it says down where he's showing the green, it says down, that's the 100-year floodplain. It says down, that was when I built the house. That's why I had to build that's the house. That's planning and zoning. Yeah. Yeah. That's not us. Yeah. Floodplain is planning and zoning. Green is green wetland. Green is the wetland. What area on the town map? Okay. All right. So the green is the wetlands area on the town map. 
which is different than what has well, the, been flagged. In and the just past. for your reference, it's it's the soil type that determines right. whether it's a wetland okay. in Connecticut. Right. So you but may not see standing water or, or something that okay. looks wet. It's what the soil is. Yeah, and, and the soil what. is made out of. Okay. The type of soil. Because it was, it's always been farm. I mean, it's yeah. farmland. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's, I, I can show you on this one from the 50s. Yeah. Where, where it's open. Uh, you want me to bring this up to you so you no, can No, no, that's yeah. okay. That's no, okay. you don't have to do that now. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I don't have a problem have them come back in a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. A couple weeks or, or what, you know, what, whenever you, you like. We meet the first and third Tuesdays. So. Yeah, so we have you have about almost three weeks Yeah. between now and our next meeting. Okay. I, you'll, you know, you could talk with them and figure out a good time. Yeah, I would just say it'd be it depends on, on how you're de determined to pursue this. If, if you need a soil scientist, it may take you a little bit longer if that's what you choose to do. Right. But you have to make that decision, and then at that right. point we can come okay. back. Okay. Yeah, because you have I'll until look, April 5th or April 19th. Okay. Right. Yeah, the preference right now would longer. be the 19th, but I'll, I'll oh, talk okay. with yep. Mr. Rochelle. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay. Great, and I great. do think one question, question, Georgie, that maybe you can help us with to, um, that comes to mind is the fact that they're bringing wood from another place onto the lot. Is that now considered? That's considered proce processing under the regulations. So that's agricultural processing. If they're bringing out materials in rather than what's on site, that's manufacturing and processing. That's where the uh, special permit comes into play under uh, planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm I'm talking in terms of uh, being for Regulated. our purposes. If it's but it as is of in the right, wetlands, but it's still in the wetlands. Right. Yeah. Actually, once it leaves that one particular site and goes yeah. to another, it ceases to be part of a regulated activity. That's coming to yeah by Reg where we need to regulate. Yeah. It. yeah. Right. Okay. That that's the concern. I'm sorry. It ceases to be an as of right yeah, activity and I'm becomes thinking. a regulated activity. Okay. We'll have it's to been review a long that. Day. Yeah, we got to review that part. We'll review that part. Okay. We got three weeks. Can I, <laughs> can I just, um, if I may, real yes. quick? Yes, I please. just wanted to just reiterate the map amendment process, just to make sure everything, everyone's on the same page. Um, you, if you're using our town data, the green layer on our GIS, then you wouldn't need to go before for a map amendment. If you have a survey, which you say you found one, and it shows different wetlands mapped on site, if it's showing a lack of wetlands, you will have to apply for a map amendment. If it's showing more wetlands, you're not required to apply for a map amendment. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that situation. Wonderful. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Great. much for coming. Thank you, Thank you for Thank coming you. in. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our, our agenda is new business informal discussion 289 Shaker Road. Hey. Good evening. Nice to see you have all these television screens. I can set up the boards as well, but if you've got it in front of Oh, we have it there. Yeah, we're fine. If I need to just ask you if I want you to change pages. Okay. Just state your name and address for the record. <laughs> uh, my name is Timothy Kuhn. I'm a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates mm -hmm. here tonight uh, representing the Connecticut Green Bank and SunPower. The Connecticut Green Bank is a quasi-state uh, agency or uh, I don't know what you call it. It's quasi-state, I guess you could call it an agency, which was developed in order to pursue uh, green energy, clean energy in the state of Connecticut. So they are the ones sponsoring these projects. Um, and in fact, there are four such projects. They're looking to do four solar projects uh, on Department of Corrections land in the state of Connecticut. There, there's two locations in Cheshire. There's one at uh, the Osborne facility in Summers, which is right up the street from this. And then we have one at uh, the Enfield facility, which is the one that's under discussion tonight. We were looking at other locations in, wet, in uh, Enfield, but they kind of got the nicks based on wetlands that uh, were discovered out there. So the actual project site and I'll try to change the page, which, enter, ah, beautiful, okay. 
So the project site is the site of the Enfield Correctional Institute, which is 289 Shaker Road. And if you look at the site plan there, the bottom of the page is Shaker Road. If you look to the left of the page, you can see Taylor Road. And the large kind of circular facility up in the back, that's the Enfield Correctional Facility. And the one over on the right of the page is Willard, the Willard facility. So in total, they have about 371 acres of land at this location. Um, and the area up front, as you can see, it's essentially it's an open field located just to the west of the driveway where, looking, where we're looking to put these, uh, the solar array. Um, now the solar array is going to serve, um, actually it's, it's, they're gonna be transmission lines that go out in four different directions. You can see one that kind of goes off toward the right and wraps around to the opposite side of the Willard facility. Uh, that one, is our, um, to Sir Willard is going to be a combination of underground and overhead. And, and I'll get into why we're doing that in a second. Um, then there's another one, a short line that goes directly kind of right up uh, straight in the middle from the middle of the solar array um, and along the driveways to a transformer at that location. And then there's two transmission lines which are going to go and follow the driveway all the way to the back of the facility where they have two other transformers. And this solar array is going to be set up behind the meter, which means it's, it's not providing power to the grid. It's strictly providing power for the facilities at the Correctional Institute. Uh, wetlands at the site were delineated by um, Davison Environmental uh, earlier last fall. And they located two isolated wetlands on the western side of the driveway and one isolated wetland, or actually not even isolated wetland, and a wetland on the opposite side of the driveway, the east side of the driveway as well. Because originally we were looking at putting the solar array for the Willard facility to that field on the right-hand side of the driveway, but it turned out to be wet. So instead, we moved it to the left side and made that array bigger. Um, So the isolated wetlands, this is, this is the driveway coming up from Shaker Road. Here's our solar array. There is an isolated wetland that originates essentially at the end of the culvert that comes from the drainage system in the parking lot. Um, but then it disappears. The water goes back in the ground and then it comes out again to an isolated wetland on the south end of the field. So those are the two wetlands on the side of the driveway. And if I hit enter and go to the next page, how do I get back to this one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, uh, the other side of the driveway. You'll notice that this whole area in the field here was delineated as wetlands as well. So on this side, we do plan on coming across the street underground so we don't have to or actually, no, we're gonna, we're gonna trench across the driveway and patch it. And then from that point, the plan is to go overhead across the field. And what that allows us to do is essentially minimize our wetland disturbance. Um, we, we've only got one pole, which we're gonna have to install. And we're looking to uh, use uh, timber matting. We'll set timber matting across the, the wetland to protect the wetland. It'll be a temporary disturbance. It, uh, you've probably seen it used by utility companies all the time, and we'll be able to set our pole from that, put our lines up from that, and also get access to the other side of the wetland to complete the transmission line. Backspace, you say? Oh, here we go. This is the, you can just barely see it, the, where we're coming across and up to the other uh, transformer and also the, along the driveway to the back. So these are just the, the transmission line routes, if you will. So in total, this fenced area will be about 4.4 acres. Um, it will generate 1.14 megawatts AC of power and as I mentioned, it would be used behind the meter to power their facilities at the site. 
it's in an existing open hay field. It's maintained as hay field. Other than the uh, the little northern isolated wetland here is is kind of overgrown with trees and brush, so they don't actually hay that one. But both the one to the south and the one across the driveway toward Willard are both maintained as hay fields. Um, so there's no tree clearing associated with what's being proposed. And we're also going to be utilizing the existing grades. So we're going to set our, our uh, panels and our racking systems at, and support systems at existing grades, which is going to eliminate the need for regrading the site, um, minimizing any soil disturbance. There will still be some minimal soil disturbance associated with driving piles, because these will be pile-supported racking systems. Um, we will put in a construction entrance as far as the, to be kind of a permanent access road, gravel access road. Other than that, um, just the trenching and the construction of the stormwater basins. And you'll see down at the southern end of the solar array, we've got two uh, stormwater management basins. Currently, this all sloped from the prison area from the north down to the south toward Shaker Road. Uh, we're not regrading it, so we're maintaining the existing drainage patterns, and we're just going to let it sheet flow um, down into these basins where we will collect the runoff from the area. We'll provide groundwater recharge. We'll provide um, the required treatment. They've, these have been designed in accordance with the Connecticut Stormwater Quality Manual um, prior to discharge through level spreaders that we have at the southern end of these basins back into the fields. Um, what else was I going to say about that? The oh, the the existing vegetation because we're not grading, we're just going to maintain the existing vegetation under it. Um, that'll you know it'll stay there, promote uh, infiltration um, much better than if we had to regrade the whole site and reseed it. It's certainly going to make it a cleaner site when it comes to soil and erosion controls because there's much less disturbance with what we're doing out here. We are providing soil and erosion controls in the form of construction entrance, uh, sediment barriers, which would be silt fence or, or uh, core logs, that type of thing. Um, we are showing areas for temporary topsoil stockpiles for when we construct our basins. The basins will be reseeded with a, uh, a, a specific mix appropriate for uh, something that receives uh, inundation every now and then. And all areas are called out, anything disturbed which is called out to be reseeded and stabilized as soon as possible to minimize any potential for erosion and sedimentation downstream. Let's see, one else. We did actually meet with the DEEP stormwater uh, section personnel back in February for their input on this plan and, and our proposed stormwater system. We you know, received favorable um, comments from them. Um, any little things that they had, we have incorporated into the plan. So um, we are maintaining a 100-foot separation. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but for solar, specifically for solar projects that fall under the Siting Council purview, the DEEP has added a, an appendix to their general permit to deal specifically with these projects. And in that appendix, they have specific setback requirements that apply, which is a minimum 100 feet from a panel to a downgrading wetland, not necessarily upgrading or cross-grading, but a downgrading wetland, as well as a 50-foot uh, essentially non-disturbed zone. So they don't want any disturbance within 50 feet of a downgrading wetland. They do have provisions for exemptions from that to reduce that. Uh, however, we're not uh, looking for those because we are indeed maintaining the 100-foot buffer from the downgradient wetland to our panels as well as the 50-foot non-disturbed zone from the, the downgradient wetlands. They do allow you, obviously, for transmission lines to, to cross a wetland and or run along a wetland. I believe their setback there is like 10 feet. So we do m meet the, their criteria for that. And this project, obviously, will have to go and uh, be registered under their general permit. We'll have to prepare the stormwater pollution control plan, submit that to them for review as well. But based on the size of this system, which is just over the one megawatt, um, 
the project does fall under the jurisdiction of the Connecticut Siting Council. So we will be going there. Um, they have the ultimate jurisdiction. However, we are here tonight reaching out uh, to the Wetland Commission and we'll also be going to the, the Planning and Zoning Commission just to solicit your input, any recommendations, any comments you might have while we're in the design stage before we go to the Siting Council to see if there's uh, anything that we can modify to make this a better project. So we, I'd be happy to answer any questions or hear any of your comments at this time. Kevin? Uh, how, many, uh, how much runoff do you expect from those? The previously, <laughs> before they came out with their with the new um, with the new appendix for uh, the stormwater, um, we would make the argument that because all the area under these panels are vegetated and the water runs off, it essentially still has almost the same distance to sheet flow over a pervious surface and provide infiltration in the ground. Uh, so there's really not a significant increase in the runoff as a result of the panels. The DEP in their appendix has kind of modified that a, a bit because for the stormwater calculations now, they don't require you to um, figure that all these panels are impervious. But what they do require you to do is change the curve number that you use for the drainage calculations to account for compaction of the existing soils during construction. They, they make the argument that all the construction equipment driving over the area has a compaction, so they make you bump up the curve number that you use. And, and curve number, I don't know if you're familiar, is based on soil types. So there's four different soil types, A, which is the best draining, B, C, and D, which is the, the least well draining. And each one has a curve number associated with it. So they, they make you take and go and uh, so if you have a B soil, they make you bump it up to the average between a B and a C. So you have to kind of increase your curve number by half a soil type. So that's how they account for it. So there is a little bit of, uh, based on their calculations and their requirements, an increase in runoff, mm -hmm. which in our case we feel is unfortunate because if we didn't have to pr provide those detention basins to mitigate that increase in runoff, we'd actually have no soil disturbance at this site because it's out in the middle of an open field. But because of their, the, their new appendix, um, that's where we're at. That's why we have these large basins. Thank you. You're um, So a comment I, I would just make is, um, you know, the retention ponds there, or the retention um, ponds, they, they seem like they would be actually a great opportunity to do some more creative things. Mm. Like we've seen some more recent applications uh, where they've made like a rain garden kind of deal where you've actually created wetlands. Um, to to deal with the water there, and I think that could also also create kind of a buffer because is it Shaker Road to the uh, south? Shaker Road is to the south, correct. Right. So it could actually create a buffer um, to that as well, which might be more appealing. It, it is actually the intent for these basins to be infiltration basins okay. because the, they do want to continue to maintain them as a mowed field area. Okay. Um, so making it a rain, we don't, we don't want it to necessarily contain water yeah. uh, for any length of time. We want to get rid of it so that it'll dry out and they can. Um, the other thing is, is for wet ponds and created wetlands like that oftentimes are done in order to provide a treatment. Yeah. Here, it's all clean runoff. So we really don't need to provide treatment. So really, we're, we're just infiltrating it so that we don't have an increase in peak runoff for the sure. most part. That's that's the main goal. Yeah, I mean, that so. certainly makes sense. It just it seemed like a great opportunity. It's going to be a you know big pit in front of a you know solar field. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two big pits. Yeah, two big pits. <laughs> Make it look pretty. Make yeah. it look pretty. Put some trees or something, shrubs or yeah. Hmm. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Uh, go ahead. Yes. Do you um, know the 
Sorry. Do you know the soil classification out there already? Yes. I believe these are Ninigrit soils. I think that I've done it. There's four sites, so I hope I'm not confusing them with one of the other ones. But I all, believe these. All Ninigrit? I believe so, yes. Can you, can you tell me the approximate grade of the site? Um, I believe this is, you know, let me measure it. That way I won't be guessing. I am one of those. <laughs> yeah, the majority of the site is between 8 to 10 percent in, in slope. 8 to 10 percent. So it's well below the 15 percent for yes. escarpment grades. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions, Samara? Georgie? Anything? Rick? No. Awesome. Well, I thank you for your presentation. Um, I thank you. If I could just ask one thing, which I sure you guys can tell me whether you're comfortable doing this or not, is is we do when we go to the the commissions like this, um, we do ask if there's a possibility that you would feel comfortable preparing a letter in support of the project for us to take to the siting council. It makes our life a lot easier when we get there if they sure. know we've met with the town and that the town has received our application well. Yeah, I'm uh, sure we could do that for you. Okay, and I could even provide you with a sample that we've used before. If you prefer, you can come up with your own, however you'd like to do that. So That we're in favor of it. Okay, I appreciate that. And Thank we definitely do appreciate the courtesy of coming yes. to us. Yes, oh. definitely. Because you don't have to. Yes. You're welcome. And I'm glad you did. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Good luck with right. your projects. Thank you. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if the newer commissioners knew that with with something like this, they don't have to come yeah. to us. Come to us. It's a courtesy that they do. They do. Mm. And it's nice if they explain yep. it, what's going on, and yep. <laughs> yeah. And I, we've had some come before us where we gave little, you know, thoughts on to add something or do something. But that was good. I think Rick's leaving. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I was driving over practicing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good luck with your projects. Um, next on our agenda is old business, the POCD. So, good night, Rick. Good night. <laughs> so, we're finally coming down to the end of this, um, trying to get everything out to our consultant by April. So, either this meeting or next meeting will be the last meeting so we discuss it. <laughs> Um, so I kind of re-summarized from all of our comments from the last meeting. Um, the bottom two, I'm not too sure what your thoughts are on those. We haven't really come up with proper strategies to implement them. Um, I've suggested a different one for number five. Um, up to you. Um, this is just for review, um, just to try and finally put everything together. Yeah, I didn't get to read it, but... Mm -hmm. So um, we'll just go over them one at a time then just to make sure everything is all included that we, that you would like to include. Um, number one, educate residents about the importance of wetlands, raise awareness. Um, some ideas that were mentioned, school education event, um, parts of the implementation strategy were include creating a wetlands resource pamphlet that's still in the works, um, great POCD goal to have. Um, perhaps some kind of cleaning systems for debris and water courses involving Boy Scouts, students who may need community service. Um, and then professional development conferences kind of fall under this um, for the commissioners and then also if residents ever wanted to attend them. Um, and then did you want to include anything for this one? Or it's good the way it is. I think it would be a good idea to actually put in here professional development for um, Enfield um, land use commissions and departments. How how, what do you, how do you mean? Well, you mentioned that to do. Um, 
Because we currently have the professional developments in place for staff and commissioners because of um, the state's training and stuff like that. Should we put it in here, though, that to maintain that or update it? As yeah, to maintain it. Or yeah, maintain. Yeah. Maintain, update. Gotcha. Based on current trends and new technologies. Okay. Anything else? Um, I'm trying to read it. <laughs> as well. Um, yeah. As well as we should probably put in here um, any um, legislative changes, you know, to uh, identify and educate based on those. Would that be? Would that be? That would be. Because we get if we're getting ready to meet state goals. Keep the regulations updated, basically, with new yeah. legislation. We can add that to where now? I, I mean, I... To number one? I think that would yeah. be a little laborious because, I mean, pretty much every day there's new... Oh, yeah. There's new case law going down and... But I don't think we want to renew our regulations and um, just every 10 years. Well, we, we do that yeah. as our... We could do that every two years. Two years, right. Organizational yeah. meetings. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's part of our bylaws or whatever. Right. I can always put something along the lines of the town of Enfield um, will continue to strive to have um, volunteers of land use commissions, specifically in wetlands or something along those lines, to maintain and update professional development as it comes. Perfect. And then along the lines of public education and raising awareness. Perfect. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I know. <laughs> um, so for for number three, it says receive map amendments as they come. Mm -hmm. um, so update it. Um, so past practice, um, the map amendment process was never successfully followed through. We had an occasional application here and there um, from the past, like I think 2019 to 2021, we've only had three map amendments right. when we've received numerous soil reports that show different map amendments than what we have. Um, so staff made it um, a thing for 2022 going forward with the new application updates to really implement the map amendment um, process of the regulations and just to make sure that people understand that if they're showing a lack of wetlands, they have to come and amend the map. So is the map actually amended? It is, online? we have it on file. Um, we're currently working on our GIS, so hopefully oh. the layer will change. Um, I'm not sure if it will, it's up to our GIS people if they will change it. Hmm. Yeah, because then when we're looking at it, it's not really... Right, it just to seems to just receiving it isn't enough, that we got to do oh, something. It, it wouldn't be worded like that in the POCD. It would obviously be in a complete sentence and make much more sense. It's just, just like an overview of like what we're including, what we're talking about. Um, yeah, re, you know, so receive and implement as... Continue, you could say continue? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. to update the map. Um, and then just going back real quick to number two, establish a wetlands restoration plan, creation plan, um, implementation strategy would be along the lines of the town of Enfield should dot dot dot, where we said create some kind of guidebook to assist developers. This may require some kind of drafting using state information for wetlands, aka identifying grants, other types of funding to help us achieve this goal. Um, did you want to edit anything or include, delete? No, I think that's... That's it, look good. Yeah. Okay. Is there a comment to, like, get a chance to review it and think about it? Yeah. It's really kind of not fair that... Well, it's not anything This was waiting new. for us when we got here. It's, um, just, it's just stuff that we talked about at yeah. the last meeting yeah. just put on paper. Yeah. Yeah. So number five, we're going to increase percentage. Of the what did you want to do for number four? Oh, I think I heard Ann say... Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, do our maps include the, the soil types too? 
No. Um, so we don't require the exact soil types. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be stated in the soil science report when they apply for the application. Um, but all the soils are also mapped on USDA's website too. Um, and that's how you can kind of tell what each property has. Um, but usually they do include the soil types when they apply for the application. So would that help us to understand what soil types to expect under the wetlands overlay? I, th I think so. I don't know if the GIS team has put a symbology layer on the GIS to classify it by soils. I mean, we just use the USDA website. Right. So, and the more data we add on our GIS, the slower and more buggier it becomes, and it's right. already crammed with new stuff for the new update. Yeah. So I'm a little worried. <laughs> so in the POCD, would that be an opportunity to put a link there then, like we have talked to the about GIS. last time? So the link would be yep. to the to the USDA within oh, yeah. the POCD. Yep. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's good for soil types and stuff. But we usually we use our map as mm -hmm. the gospel. Yeah, when it comes down to it, um, we refu we refu we refer to the Enfield database for the wetlands mapping. Right. Um, and the last one was develop a long-term sustainable wetlands program, which we briefly went over a couple meetings ago, and then to streamline the inland wetland process. Um, unless, unless I'm taking it a different way, but what I think you mean with that is to like, along with like a pamphlet for the residents, like to also educate them on the process of the application flow, what everything involves and what it means and why the, t why the statute timeline is the way it is and so forth. Um, unless you um, meant it differently. No, I think that's yeah. what we okay. meant. State statute. Georgie, is this, is this going to be the finalized version? No. 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 Okay. No. okay. The, the only thing that uh, we did discuss was, um, you know, comparing historical data and identifying um, how much wetlands we've actually lost. Right. So Yukon Deep has already mapped out those calculations for the state. Oh. Oh. Um, I haven't had time to dig out Enfield's calculations, but they do have data like that, and they do upload it more often than like our town would or um, other planning agencies. So, but there there are ca current calculations out there. Okay. Do they, can, how do they know what to put for us? I'm not too sure how they do it. Um, it's Yukon Clear. It's a new mapping system. I'm not sure when it came out, but it's fairly new. Um, they they actually migrated all their GIS data between Yukon Magic and Yukon Clear and in, in, um, Eco, I think it's called. So, um, but I'm not sure how they get their calculations. I haven't really researched it too much, but there is data out there currently. Okay. good. So we might want to put that into this new number five, increased percentage of wetlands protection based upon historical usage and mm. data. Another um, good thing you could add in there would be climate change. Yeah, so number six, I think, is fine taken off because we'll do that during our reviews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It also kind of falls in line more of number one with education um, and promoting wetlands awareness and stuff like that. And I didn't really have an implementation strategy drafted for it, so that's why I crossed it out because I figured it would maybe tie into the first one. Yeah. So. All right. I will draft this up again. Okay. Um, email me if there's anything over the period of the next meeting that you wanted to talk about, add, change, whatever. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is a report of the planning staff. None to be reported. None. Okay. Next is new applications to be received. IW 650, 43 Monroe Road, wetland application to install an in-ground pool with a surrounding patio in the upland review area. Matthew Hart, applicant Matthew Hart and Kimberly Andrews, owner, map 90, lot 111, R44. I have a question. Is this the only map that was submitted? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, they don't designate the inlet, the what owns on here. If yeah. if homeowners it's not even the full. Usually, site. when homeowners apply, yeah, we, yeah. Um, as long as as long as their maps are to scale, we accept them. It's been our past practice to do so. Um, this map. He, he has a whole fence around his property, and that's the line you see on the survey. So it's like a, it's like missing like a foot or so of his land, um, and then the wetlands take up the whole. He's in he's in the Upland Review area. Yeah, yeah I was going to say I looked at the GIS. His property is not in the wetlands. It's right. the property next door. Yeah. See it. But I mean, we really by this. Right. right. Uh, who knows? I mean, this. Yeah isn't a property line this is a fence that he wants to put in right. so no, the fence is already six, there yeah. you know he's just doing the in-ground pool and patio yeah. right he has nothing else in his yard yeah, he's like 79 feet from the nearest but it's escarpments yeah escarpment yeah. so um we don't regulate like 200 100 foot of an escarpments we only regulate the 100 foot up in the view area yeah. right yeah. and yeah. that's where he, he's like right at the 100 like the middle of the in-ground pool where he wants to put it is about the 100 foot mark right yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's right on the border there. Yeah. I will um, note that I, I'm, I live on uh, Monroe Road, totally opposite end. This has no effect on my property or anywhere near my property. Um, so I can, you know, um, make a um, non-based informed decision. I will let everybody know you do want to look at the look, look at the map. Um, like a Google map, because where he's located, on the other side of the road, there are houses that their backyards are in significant wetlands. Where he is, is it's all disturbed. It's in the middle of the development, right. so they're all they're all previously disturbed, um, and it's it's not a, a huge slope. There, where they are, it, it goes up a little bit in the back, but it's. Um, when I first saw it, I'm thinking it, he was on that wetland side, and I'm like, oh, wow. Um, but yeah. it's not. Um, it's yeah. so look at the map, and it, he he should should have submitted that because right. that would make much more sense to folks. Um, so you, usually, um, staff takes that into consideration for the staff yeah. report. Just yeah. he submitted his application on Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had time to draft the draft staff report. <laughs> Get all that in yeah. there. And usually usually we wouldn't accept applications to be received so soon like, like this one, but because it's a small residential application, we've done it before for other similar type of applications. Figured it would be okay. Oh, it's fine. So. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, I just would like to see the actual outline of the entire property, not just cherry picking what he wants to show us. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I'm not necessarily sure that it's cherry picking. I, yeah. I, I'm thinking that, you know, it's very You're different just for a resident to come right. before the commission than it is for a, a, a major company. But we should see the entire yeah. Yeah. property. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. You, know. I, you, know, you can I'm not get just, the residential property on our webpage. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you so can also it's see not on the unusual website. To ask yep. for it. Um, usually we wouldn't make a homeowner hire a surveyor just to yeah, get yeah. proper lands. However, there you, are You can pull it up pins. on GIS and it takes about a minute and a half. There are iron pins where they can stake them out themselves and use, um, was it like mason string? Yeah. To, so we recommend that sometimes. And um, But the fence, because I thought that too when he first submitted his application um, to show the whole property, oh, but I the fence goes it. right up to his property line according to our GIS. Yeah. But, and I have not checked to see if we had any current sur surveys done for his um, property. Yeah. Yeah, and, and when I pulled up the GIS map in the wetlands, I you know, I thought that was sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. you know, the, the pool is right behind the house. Yeah. It's right there. It's mm -hmm. not like, I agree. Yeah. And, yeah, and the property is is really, if you look at it, it's not, Yeah. it almost, yeah. if you look at the front of the house, it doesn't look like there's enough room back there to put a pool, but, <laughs> there, is. but there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do we need a motion to approve? No, it's just being received. 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 I mean, that's what I meant. Motion to receive? No. We don't vote. You don't need a motion to receive. Yeah, we don't motion to receive. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Meetings Aye. adjourned. <laughs>